the stories behind the stories with Mark Arnold, exclusively on the Geek Speak Show. This is historian Mark Arnold with another installment of the stories behind the stories, and today we're interviewing Milton Knight. And uh, Milton Knight is a cartoonist and animator, and he's worked on various projects such as the movie Cool World and TV series of Sonic the Hedgehog and Mighty Mouse and uh, Felix the Cat. He's also worked for a time at Crack Magazine and also contributed article, excuse me, contributed artwork to many magazines and record album covers. So I'd like to thank you uh, for joining me on the show, Milton, and to tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in cartooning. Well, thanks, Michael. Um, oh, Mark, Mark. <laughs> oh, Mark. <laughs> Sorry. I um, let's see. I I. I um always wanted to be a cartoonist uh, ever since uh, I can remember very small and um, I first started uh, getting work in uh, well let's see about 1978 I was born in 1962 so I was 16 when I started working uh, I did scripts for uh, Richie Rich at Harvey Comics and uh, let's see after that I uh, got work from uh, Marvel uh, doing a, a story for Crazy Magazine, which no longer runs, mm -hmm. and things uh, it did illustration work in various magazines like the National Lampoon and Heavy Metal. I did some strips for, and uh, kind of went on from there. The biggest change was when I came out to L.A. and started working in uh, animation. Uh, yeah, my my first project was a Cool World out here, and. Uh, well, as you know, it, it, it didn't turn out too well, but uh, at least it got me started. After that uh, was Sonic the Hedgehog and a, a bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, so so what do you prefer? Do you prefer, like, uh, comic books or animation? Oh. Well, um, they both have their advantages. But I have to say in animation, uh, professional animation, you're less likely to see, you know, your image your your vision come true because it's uh it goes through the producers and it goes through the animation overseas which i'm not happy about at all <laughs> and besides it really uh, tends not to exist i mean they're doing flash cartoons now but the uh, labor is generally uh, made up of uh, younger people who are willing to uh, put up with more and take less money so that's kind of faded out for me and uh I uh, actually love doing comics because uh, I do have command over the whole thing, the whole the whole uh, product, and you know, text can be juxtaposed with uh, image, and uh, generally, it's just uh, a uh, more subtle way of getting messages across. Like I said, you can uh, use the text as well as image. And I prefer to use the image. I, I see, I feel, too many comics with text lining all over the pages. And uh, I'm feeling, why, why are these people not using the medium uh, for, uh, you know, to, to, to its better use, what it can do? The image is just as important as the picture. Uh, maybe, uh, and, and the picture is, uh, I mean, the image is more important than text, maybe even more so. And I feel that uh, they should and can be used in tandem to really create a rich product. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's because of your animation training that uh, you feel that way? Well, you know, <laughs> when I was doing comics, I felt that way too. Um, when I, even when I was doing comics as a child, I would try to uh, get, you know, the filmic kind of uh, uh, storytelling there. And uh, sometimes it made sense on the page, and sometimes it didn't. So I was always, uh, like, uh, trying to approximate animated film. And uh, another reason was because uh, that, I, that I gravitated towards comics was because uh, it was uh, it's a more immediate medium. I mean, it's right there on the page when you draw it. And also, that's just the way the market was in uh, New York, where I came from at the time. It was much easier to get work in illustration and comics than in animation. 
That's true. Yeah, all the animation studios had moved out a long time before. <laughs> yeah, there were a few. There were a few left, but they tended to stick to uh, people who had been working there for like 10, 20 years. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, 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 they was pretty sewn up. Now, now you are a, a major fan, as far as I can tell, of Terry Tunes more than any of the other studios. What, 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 what is the appeal of Terry Tunes? Now, I like them myself. I'm not belittling. It's just, I'm yeah. just curious why Terry Tunes over, say, any of the other uh, Fleischer or any of the other classic animation studios. Well, it was for very personal reasons. I think <clears throat> uh, it was that. Well, they, they, they had a certain sense of fantasy that uh, other studios did not. In other studios, I mean, say in the West Coast studios, you wouldn't see characters walking from one star to another. I mean, you could call it naive, and it was naive, and uh, they act, tended to repeat themselves an awful lot. But uh, at the time, I didn't see that because, uh, you know, pretty much on television at the time, it was either Mighty Mouse or Heckle and Jekyll, once in a while, they'd throw in, a, like, a dinky duck or something to fill up space. Mm -hmm. But uh, they just, uh, the, the animation itself had uh, a spacey feel. I mean, everybody knows about Jim Tyre by now, but there were a lot of other uh, interesting animators there. Well, Carlo Vinci comes immediately to mind. His stuff was uh, very graceful and, uh, and punchy. He tended to do dances, uh, but not all of them, of course. <laughs> and... Uh, um, let's see, I, I just uh, like the, uh, actually among the Mighty Mouse cartoons, I wasn't too crazy about uh, most of them, except for the ones with uh, Pearl Pureheart, you know, the operatic ones, yeah. <laughs> and the ones that took place in the city, you know, with the gangster cats. Those were the two I liked the most, uh, the two types. And uh, let's see, uh, but I always gravitated to the East Coast cartoons because uh, they I could never predict what the uh, animation would look like, the, the drawing itself. I mean, they were less disciplined about that, and uh, people tended to go their own way. And, say, in the Warner Brothers cartoons and the MGM cartoons, which I now recognize as, you know, great art, great humor, all of that, but they had their act down so much that, I pretty much knew what was going to happen next. Yeah, very slick. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, <clears throat> say in the Mighty Mouse cartoons, again, this is very personal, but I loved the uh, way that the uh, titles, uh, the ones they would use for the television ones, might be very strict type, uh, would be fonts. And then we go into this crazy stuff, and the juxtaposition of that really <laughs> made me happy. And uh, this was when there were no VHS tapes, there, were, there was no still framing or anything. So I had to, like, keep these in my mind until they decided to show it again on television. And uh, it was a whole different experience because uh, I think that by doing that, that helped cause a, an individuality in my own work that I wouldn't have if, uh, you know, they were always around to watch, study, and copy. Right. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're kind of running a little bit out of time here. I was just, <laughs> I was just, yeah, it goes fast. Uh, I was just wondering uh, what projects you're currently working on. And well, um, I'm working on the graphic classic series, something I have done for about ten years now. It's uh, adaptations, comic adaptations of. Uh, uh, let's see, classic authors like Edgar Allan Poe and Arthur Conan Doyle, and it's a very rewarding uh, project, and I'm working now on uh, some poetry. And uh, coming up this April, I'm going to uh, be speaking at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire about uh, the, art, the art of comics and animation. Oh, very good. Um, is there a way to, that people can contact you, say a website or... Well, my website is called uh, MiltonKnight.net. It hasn't been updated in a while, but I hope to be getting to it soon. And my email address is MiltonKnight, that's M-I-L-T-O-N-K-N-I-G-H-T, at Earthlink.net. Okay. Well, very good. I want to thank you, Milton, for joining me today on thank the you very Speak much. Show. Sure. Glad to be here.
All right. And uh, if you want to uh, comment on this show or any show that we do on uh, show, the stories behind the stories, you can email me at mark at thegeekspeakshow.com. You can hear the complete story behind the stories by going to funideas.50webs.com. That's 50webs.com. Funideas.50webs.com. The stories behind the stories. Exclusively on The Geek Speak Show.